of many sons, so I need a lot of attention. You talk, I move my views here. So let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God send an extra greater portion of His Holy Spirit upon all of us. Enable us to recognize our inner dignity, the way we are incredibly loved by God, even in each and every one of our moments. And may we, may we desire to surrender ourselves back to God in the most positive, fruitful, and authentic way. May we learn from this the cyclical to go ever more strong in our faith. Stop doubting, giving the temptation to unbelief and idolatry, and to accept Jesus Christ not only as our Savior, our Lord, and our Lord, but our true Messiah. May Almighty God give us his most choicest blessings and keep us far from the evil one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please, you're doing a great job being planned. There's only ten questions today, so I'm going to race through this. And if you do the ten questions, I'm going to ask you when class begins, what, in a couple words, what do you understand by faith? Today's topic is faith. It's the most important topic. I don't know a more important topic. It, it leads to love. It leads to hope. And shh, you're doing a great job. You just can't talk. You can't talk. Just write true or false, and you should do this in five minutes. And if you have any other comments about faith that we're going to talk about, or something you want to enter into from, from, from the uh, encyclical, please bring it to my attention. God bless you. I'll just stand right up here and watch this. <laughs> the people play the day, right here. That's right. <laughs> this is a tough crowd right here. I bet you picked that girl from that. It's very good. We're having a talk. This is the first time I used that recipe. Very good. Thank you. Okay, five minutes, guys. And we'll move right along. And thank you for your cooperation. Dinner? Phenomenal. Oh, a few minutes. Start with this, okay? No, don't worry about the TRDF. Yeah. It's just to keep us so, somewhat uh, on the same page. I'm going to start with the Pope's interview. I didn't read it. I didn't get it from somebody. But someone who did read it and saw Cardinal Golden and Bob Barron, uh, Dan Wolf, answered the questions that the reporters were trying to spin at us. Here is the short version of what's causing all the ruckus, okay? Our kids and people who fall away from the faith or don't know the faith are not going to respond to finger pointing and guilt and you're not following the law, which is all true, if they don't have an encounter with Jesus. It's not that hard to understand. It makes perfect sense. Our faith, so I'm the one who has a pacemaker, and they die, and I say this. Our faith is not primarily following a set of rules. That's not it. It's part of it. It's not the main part of it. The main part of our faith is falling in love with the Trinity. That's best expressed and evidenced by the love Jesus Christ has for us. That's, the, that's primarily the understanding of faith. Will there be words to, of course there's going to be words to faith. The faith is going to, is going to evidence, there will, there will be evidence, there will be fruits. But primarily, if your kid is not going to church, or your husband, or someone else, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not married, but I was a son to, to a wonderful mother. And, and it could have been my dad. I mentioned this from the pulpit. Happened to my mother. Only so long in this. And you turn it out. And you turn it off. So we got we got to emphasize the encounter with Christ. We got to emphasize the encounter with the risen Lord. That's all the pope is saying. Look, I mentioned this uh, again from the pulpit. If you're playing euchre, I don't play piano. I don't play hearts. I don't play these other bridge. The fifty-three bridge. I play euchre. And if you're gonna go alone in euchre, and you've got the two bowers, the, the two jacks. You lead with your best card. You lead with your best card. When you're talking about your faith, don't lead with the laws. And it might sound contradictory to some people. Well, Father, are you caught? Is the Pope, are you? No! What is the primary experience of the Catholic religion and the Christian religion? Jesus Christ and relation with them. When you follow, let me give you an example. In confession, do people still do this? I'm not doing this too. Not just sins. The way we express them. I broke this law. I broke that law. I offended this law. Actually, you offended a person. You offended a person. That's the substance of the sin. It just happened to be missing mass. It just happened to be greed. It just happened to be lust. It just happened to be anger or gluttony or whatever the other sins may be. But the primary purpose, if you go into confession, is I hurt my friendship with God. And what's the moral sin? Turning my back entirely on the friendship with God. As opposed to a venial sin. Just turning my, my shoulder to him. Or, or ignore him a little bit. So I, I, we cannot emphasize that enough, especially with our children. Because I look at the youth group, 
these teenagers. And, and, I, and I have great confidence that so many of these kids who have had a living, genuine experience of Jesus Christ will go on living their faith in college, and when they leave college, get into their adult lives. And I say this a million times, I get to be corrected, I invite them to correct me, and they will marry well. Because you marry someone like yourself. And if you're practicing the faith, you're not going to put up with some guy or some girl who's just not... And, and some, again, there's exceptions to this. This guy getting married right now, Charlie and Maggie. Charlie went to RCIA. And when she, Maggie was dating Charlie, she went to Haiti on one of my Haiti trips, which all of you should think about going on. And she, she could find him. And she says, Father, I told her I could talk about this, so I'm not blowing up some confession <laughs> secret or some counsel secret. She says, Father, I, I think I like this boy a lot, and he doesn't have any faith. What should I do? Two words. Dumbo. <laughs> and now she's married. He, he went to RCIA. He's, he's going to become a full-blown Catholic. He's going to a full-blown Catholic. And their intimacy and their communication and the foundation of their marriage now flows not only naturally, but supernaturally. So, I, I want to raise as my first point. Before I go any further, what are a couple words in your experience of faith? And not all at once, but... Relationship. Relationship. One word, two words for faith. Trust. Trust. Excellent. Yeah. Gift. Yes. Belief. Peace. Peace. Serenity. Belief. Huh? Belief. Belief. These are these are all, all awesome. What else you got? Loyalty. Hope. Hope. Light. Light. The light, the light of faith. Lumen and Mercy. Mercy. Patience. 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 What do you got? Forgiveness. Confidence. Confident? He talks about that. Confidence. Eternity. Eternity. Joy. Love. These are all awesome. I told the seventh eighth graders, if you're down, because we have a lot of that now, you know that this is? A lot of depression on kids, a lot of not fitting in. You know, I, I believe that my own opinion, the rise of machines has made our kids a lot less, you know, in, less, a lot, a lot less personal or more in, impersonal, is that the right word? Yeah. Okay. And I said, if you're not happy, are you praying? How's your faith life? I don't, I don't, I don't know someone with a lot of faith who walks around like this. I don't know. Do you know anybody? You can have, have sorrows, you can have suffering, you can have tragedies. But the person with faith has a confidence, has a serenity, has, a, has an acceptance about that. The Bible teaches us one of the best definitions for faith is evidence of uh, evidence of the unseen and oh I should know this. It's, it's in the Bible. The evidence, I don't know that definition. I'm very embarrassed. Evidence of the unseen and the Here's where I want to go before we get into this. 
in the, no, here's a big move. I, I, for me, this is a big move in the, in, the, in, the, in the opening. The opening sentence says, and the popes are good like this. When you get an encyclical, the opening sentence often becomes a theme or a guidepost for, for the entire document. The light of faith. This is, I'm reading from chapter one. The light of faith. This is how the church's tradition speaks of the great gift brought by Jesus in John's gospel. Okay, watch this movie. You like talking about faith. I like talking about faith. Catholics like talking about faith. Non-Catholics like talking about faith. I'm not here just to talk about faith. I'm here to talk about what does the church mean by faith. We can talk about faith all day long. You can have your opinion, I can have my opinion. This thing starts off by saying, the light of faith. This is how the church's tradition speaks of the great gift brought by Jesus and John's gospel. What is the church's tradition? Let's start with Jesus, the apostles, their successors, the other Christians at the time before the scriptures were written. The, the word that was inspired by the Holy Spirit and wrote down by the authorship of the apostles. The lives of the saints. The early church fathers and theologians. They make up the corpus. Look, if this was law school, what would you be learning? Precedence. You would be learning what court cases established X and Y to be so. That's what, that's what lawyers do in big court cases. They say, well, 19, for example, well, Roe versus Wade. Everybody knows it was terrible law. There was no precedent. There was no precedent for this law to take place. There was no precedent. They couldn't go and say, well, you see, uh, justices, let's report. In 1967, there was a court case that established the right to take an unborn child. There was none. Roe versus Wade was earth shattering. And everyone, everyone is, it's all nervous people talk about, the liberals and the left and the progressives. Because they think, oh, what, what if they overturn it? Imagine, they'd say a lot of different lies. You'd expect to take it into the other person. Imagine what would happen if we actually, you know, follow thou shalt not kill when it works out. The point is, in establishing faith for yourself, a very personal relationship, what does the corpus of the church's history say about faith? I want what the saints say about faith to be my faith. I want St. Paul in chains in Rome and his letters to be the faith that I have. I want the Blessed Mother under the foot of the cross. I want that kind of faith. Do you think for a second with Mary under the cross, watching the author of love himself being tortured and murdered, by, by uh, godless men. Do you think for a millisecond, and I'm asking you this, think she ever lost her faith? Think she ever lost her hope? Do you ever think she lost her love? No. If she had a sword pierce her heart, she had sorrow beyond, and, and, I, and I, may I dare say so, all of our suffering together. She was without sin, and she, she really embodied the suffering of, of so many moms and so many, so many people. She never, never lost her faith. Never lost her hope. Never lost her love. Um, and I always said this, and again, I'm going to be correct. I might get a phone call from a bishop with him. But what did Mary offer at the cross that Jesus did not offer at the cross? Now, I'm not saying a sacrament or sacrifice was complete. It was perfect. But what did Mary offer standing beside Jesus that Jesus couldn't offer? Faith. Faith. One more. Hope. Hope. Jesus didn't have faith at all. I hope that doesn't shock you. His faith was a trust. But he was God. Who did he have faith in? He had a trust. <clears throat> okay? And his hope was, 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 was a knowledge. Unlike ours. <coughs> we, we, we don't have the same on this, obviously. So Mary, the foot of the cross, like, wait, I want that faith. I want the faith of the apostles. And I, I've said this so often. When a non Catholic Christian, and I, I gotta wait, I'm, I'm working this direction. And if you're not Catholic Christian, God bless you. It doesn't in any way, shape, or form to demean or criticize you. At all. At all. But the, oh, the, 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 the non-Catholic Christian reads the Bible, and he asks a very important question. What must I do to be saved? Bravo. What does a Catholic do when he reads the scripture? How can one? Not how can I be saved. How can, how can all of us be saved? Think about this. If you're a non-Catholic Christian, your community, you're in a community, unless you're in the woods somewhere hanging out with bears, lions and tigers and bears are mine. 
If you're, if you're a non-Catholic Christian, you're in a community of faith that tries to find the way to be saved. It's just like us. But we want everybody to be saved. Every one of our eyes, remember the creed used to be, we believe. It's in Latin, it's I believe, credo. But this is philosophical. Every eye I'll ever make, it's contained within a we. God revealed himself to me? Well, yeah. But he revealed himself to us. God said, one flock, one shepherd, one church, one baptism, one faith. There's so many letters of Paul that talk about dissension and disunity. And, 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 and say it, how do you want to say it? If Jesus Christ is God, if I'm talking to somebody, and Jesus Christ is not God to them, you follow me? They're just a deist, or they're just a monotheist. There could be a Jewish person, or a Muslim, or a, I don't know, whoever else, Hindu, or Buddhist, but all they think is there's God, no Jesus. My line of inquiry or reasoning is going to differ greatly than if they believe in Jesus. Now they believe in Jesus. My next question is, are you sure he's the son of God? I believe in Father, but if I can't call him Father, I would have passed him somewhere, all manner of your father. Okay, so they say, yes, sir, whatever. I, I do believe he's the God. Do you believe he started the church? <laughs> if, if he's God, and he did, it has consequences. There's consequences. I had a man today to say something very, very bright and intelligent that made absolutely no sense. To my face. He says, Father? I didn't say Father. He said, my God is much more inclusive. Sound great. Our faith has consequences. We can't be more inclusive. Faith is not meant to be on my terms. It's meant to be in history. And he laid out for us through the church's history and her tradition what that faith looks like. In Latin, it's very simple. Some things get real easy in Latin. The worship of Mary, which is non existent, is clear, clarified in Latin. Because in Latin, we have two words one denotes worship. One denotes um, devotion. A, a latria means worship. Mary would never get latria. Uh, Latulia, Mary gets devotion. In Latin, it couldn't be more simple. Latria, do it. Uh, Mr. Uh, non Catholic, Christian, can you, can you show me one verse where you see Dulia attached to the Blessed Virgin Mary? No, I cannot. Stop talking about Catholics who worshiping Mary. That's just stupid. There's another word in Latin that clarifies. The fetus quae, Q U A, Q U A E. And the fetus quo, Q U O. Anyone want to take a, sh a shot? I can't say the first half, I don't know what that means, sorry. <laughs> Anyone want to take a guess what that means? The fetus quae, F I D E S, Q U A E, and the fetus quo, F I D E S, Q U O. What's the distinction between the fetus quae and the fetus quo? Good guess. Good try, that's good. No? It's both have to do with faith. One is plural and one is singular? Close. Close. Feet is close, my faith. Again, most people have faith. People don't go to church have faith. Come on. You have faith? Well, you're a guy. I'll, 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 I'll go out of my way on this one. Most people we talk to on a daily basis, they believe in God. Most people don't This is my opinion. Like, you can shoot me down with statistics. I believe all the believe in God. I really do. Certainly in hard times, but most people have. I think a lot of our friends who fall away from church who've been educated through Catholic schools and have a good primary, uh, primary education upbringing, they believe Jesus Christ is God. They've got faith. They don't have the church's faith. Faith is great, is the objective faith Christ left and handed on to the apostles that have been handed out through two centuries in an unbroken tradition that comes to you through your priests and to the church's teachings and to the moral code and through the creed, and through the worship. So, here's my point. It's great to you have faith. I did this this morning. I love, I don't know how I do this. I love giving people who come to early morning mass a very, very hard time. I just enjoy it. And you know why I do it? Of course, yes, I like it. Yes, of course. But they can take it. They can't take it on Sundays. Daily mass words can take it. They can. And I gave them a really hard time. Oh, you got faith, though. Good for you. Good for you. Give yourself a ribbon and a chocolate cookie. Sorry, that's great. I want more than that. I want the faith of Christ left unadulterated. 
He gave to the apostles as their witnesses. That's what you want. And it's great to have your own. You follow, you follow this distinction? There's your faith and what the church proclaims to be your faith. Your job and my job is to get what the church says and make it our own. And so now when you proclaim this, so you're now you're in a discussion with someone at the, uh, we call it Bucky's, Starbucks. You're at Bucky's and some guy's saying something goofy and you go, that's, you say, no, 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 that's, that's not how it is. Well, that's your opinion. You say, no, actually, it's not my opinion. That is the unadulterated truth that has been handed on by Jesus Christ to his apostles for 2,000 years. Wouldn't that be a better argument? <laughs> Seriously. You're not arguing with me. Let's go a step deeper. This faith of which I speak, it came literally. It came down from heaven. It appeared to us. The light appeared in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And you've got to feel this way. I, I know you do. As things are getting, that's my, my opinion, my, my observation, um, my subjective perception, as things are getting darker and darker and darker, my faith continues to get brighter and because of the contrast. You know, when, you, when I wake up in the morning and turn that light on, I know what's going to happen. Ah! <laughs> now, I'm not tracking. But that light hits your eyes. Maybe I'm getting older. You know, you old people. Does it hurt your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> but it does. And it's because it's a contrast. You were sleeping. You were, and it's like, ah! You know? So, does that make sense to you? That makes sense. Okay. Now, I'm moving right along. Okay, read it right out of here. Read it right out of here. Faith thus appeared to some. Now, this. Okay. Here's where I'm going with this. I have a working definition of faith now, right? We got a working definition uh, evidence of things hoped for, knowledge of things unseen. What the church has handed down faithfully, uncorrupted for 2,000 years, that, flew, that, that fell out of the actions and mouth of Jesus himself. To the apostles and their successors in hand unto us. Specifically to the creed, the moral code, and the worship. Acts 2, 4, 2, before there's the Bible written. There's only three things. The teaching of the apostles and their fellowship. The prayers and the breaking of the bread. The mass. So in those three areas, the church's moral teachings, the creed, and the worship, the sacraments, we have imparted to us the fullness of the truth Christ came to leave us. Okay? That's, that, that's where I'm going. That's, that's the position of faith. Now, what comes in? Subjectivism, modern philosophy, and it opposes the faith. It says, Nietzsche used it as an example, it's not true. Father's wrong. Father and the Catholics have closed off a whole way of thinking that is keeping us enslaved and darkening our minds. Okay? You follow? So you have your thesis and your antithesis. The thesis is, like many of you said, God gave us this gift of faith. We've seen it. And we're trying to march with the church lockstep as we, as we go through history, bringing this faith to the next generation. And opposing us, of course they are, the thinkers. The thinkers are by and large gone now, right? Now we're dealing with hedonists, centralists, and pretty much what I'll call nihilists. Those who believe there's no meaning. We've gotten bad pretty fast. But Nietzsche is trying to oppose us intellectually. And he's saying that, I'm going to go on and read this to you. I want to pin paragraph uh, two. Um, he says to his sister, his young sister, to take risks, to tread new paths, with all the uncertainty of one who must find his own way. And that this is where humanity's path part. If you want peace of soul and happiness to believe, if you want to be a follower of truth, you can see. Okay, let me keep my finger right here. I'm having a Bob, Father Bob Bear moment here. Father Bob Bear was my teacher. 19 years ago in the seminary, and he was just so brilliant, and he was so philosophical. Uh, philosophers and people who argue professionally, they're much like, I was going to say liars, they're much like the magicians. They want you to look somewhere, so you miss, you miss what's in front of you. You see that movie? What's the movie? Catch the uh, uh, magician movie? With Morgan Freeman's voice on the, on the opening? The only way, remember, remember this quote? The only way magic really works is if you no, actually not. Pay attention. You've got to pay attention for magic to work. In other words, they show you where they want you to look. And you round and go, uh, And it's all going on over there. It's a, it's a sleight of hand. That's why I never wear a sweater. Um, it's a sleight of hand. So, here's what he's doing. Here's what he's doing. 
He's giving you a false dichotomy. And people are buying it. He's saying, you're either going to find peace and, and uh, soul and happiness, or you're going to be a follower of truth. That's a false dichotomy. If you buy into that setup of the table, if you sit down at that intellectual table, you're going to serve a terrible meal. The meal is going to make you sick. You're going to be vomiting in the bathroom for the rest of your life. You follow a metaphor that was being boy right there. Come. That's my guts of caffeine giving it. No, that's a great, that's a great metaphor. I'll give you another one. Nature or the Lord. Beyond good and evil. All the really smart people go, wow, that is so smart. That's the most stupid thing I've ever heard in my entire life. There's no such thing as an act that goes beyond the meaning. Every act is grounded in a judgment. Is it a good act? Is it a neutral act? Is it a bad act? He said poppycock. He said nothing. And the people, smart people, that was so brilliant. He's doing it again. You're either seeking, you either, either want peace of soul and happiness, or to be a follower of truth. You know our response to Nietzsche and the modern philosophers? Re, fides, et ratio. John Paul II wrote an awesome encyclical, taking out that whole, deconstructing that whole false argument by saying, faith and reason are brothers, arm and arm. The God of creation is the same God of redemption. Science will never, ever, ever discover some truth scientifically to the sciences that will contradict our faith and revelation. It, it's impossible. What do you mean? It's the same God. He can't contradict himself. Could, could God make a rock so heavy he can't lift? Excuse me, we're having fun. The person who asked the question, you're an idiot. <laughs> I can't answer. Don't question me. Don't sit down for your own mental health purposes. I know there's a lot of them. Especially for family members. Don't sit down at a table that has been that has been we need to go to a table, don't dress it. You yeah, is there a bigger, a bigger word for it? Don't sit at don't sit at an intellectual table, someone set up for you that's not that's not making any sense. You understand? Once someone sets up an argument for you with either or and, both, and it's not a proper option, and you, you, you take the bait, you're 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 gonna have mental health issues. Because you're not going to know what you're doing. Could God make a rock so heavy? Can't leave me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You, you could go leave me. Don't question. Don't question. You follow this? It's called a false dichotomy. They're called. Uh, here's another example. Uh, the Butler. I saw the Butler. They painted Ronald Reagan out to be a loser. They painted him out to basically my opinion. They made him out to be, to be racist. That's my opinion. I saw the movie. And in my spare time, I am a film critic. So. People say this, you hear this all the time. If you're a conservative, you hate the poor. As far as that means here, if you're creating jobs, you love everybody. You can't throw so much, so much money at the poor and go, well, see, I love the poor. I give money all the time. Same thing with, with our hate project. We talk about this all the time. We talk about this all the time. People want the whole baby to use it. Is there anything that you're doing that's going to have a, make a difference in the future of the country or the persons you're serving's lives? We need people to hold babies. I'm not knocking holy babies. You gotta hold babies. But if you're writing a check to some organization just to feel good about yourself, that you're kind of giving money to something. And we need money! My, my point is, if you're doing something that's gonna further the good of the individuals you are serving, that's another level of charity. They're just writing a check to something. So we throw all this money at the poor. Does that mean that the party that's sending all that money to the poor loves the poor? I don't think so. I don't think so. I have my own opinion. Ronald Reagan said Ronald Reagan. I mean, I'm not saying it's him, but those those years, 1982, 1984, 88, there were jobs. Generally speaking, the trends were they were adding. I forget the first year after the recovery, seven million jobs. My point is, don't take the bait when someone tries to set up a table for you by saying you must believe this or you'll be a bad. No, that's not that's not how I think. You could love the church, love the pope, and love the poor. You could be a totally faithful person to be a scientist. Remember, uh, the, the first time um, Einstein heard the Big Bang Theory, he was a Belgian mathematician who was a priest who gave the Big Bang Theory. There are 16 craters on the moon named after Jesuits. They trailblazed the whole astronomy thing. They're way out in front of everybody else. So that's just such a false dichotomy. I can't I'm not beating that over here. My, my, my simple point is, People who live with faith live in a bigger world. We live in a 
bigger world. It has a heaven in it. It has an unbelievable, expansive uh, uh, power that is all God's. And that's why we call him Michael Mighty. Okay, last sentence in paragraph two. Faith would thus be the illusion of light, an illusion which blocks the path of a liberated humanity to its future. So, that, so that's the argument. You people of faith, you're obstructing the reasons of natural organic growth. If it wasn't for the people of faith, we'd have many more scientific progress, much more progress in science. We'd be much more enlightened people. Who should I respond? Look what happened when they took away faith from, from Nazism and communism. Think of the destruction done in the 20th century alone by the atheist movements. Think about it. It's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And when all the people who don't, to, who don't go to church, when they go to Europe, where's the first place they go? They go to church. When they go to museum, where do they see? Religious art. If you ever think about Bach or some of the great composers, those are those those uh, scores that were were dipped in the in the, the oil that wrote the scores was dipped in the, in the ink of the Bible. As a someone gave that fancy expression, it was it was the scriptures and the faith that inspired people to the most amazing of human accomplishments. So to think otherwise is just absurd. Think about the hospitals. Who started the hospitals? We did. We started universities. We did. So, much like the same sex thing the Pope is talking about, and, and, and the other thing the Pope is talking about, the media and its allies, they get out in front of the church. They define us. You're not talking about your faith. You're not. I'm just giving you a hard time right now. That's what I do for a living. You're not witnessing your faith. So what happens? Your children, your neighbors, they people go on living their lives. When Sue and I were out for dinner dinner that Friday, and my favorite guy in Russia, Okay, thank you very much. And we, we, we were dressed in regular clothes. Everyone's going to well dress in regular clothes. So walking out, we started a conversation with this couple. And I told Monsignor, I said, you know what that is? It's just the pastor of St. Thomas of Crystal Lake. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monsignor heard me say hello. I don't know why I went. So the lady was talking about MSNBC. And they're Catholics, self-proclaimed Catholics from, from uh, I'm going to tell parish, uh, but the can uh, St. Patrick. <laughs> and she says, he's talking about these, these uh, newscasters on MSNBC. I know what he's talking about. I know, I watch the enemy's channel every once in a while. Yeah. It, it, it gets me motivated. So these two guys, one of them anyway, is saying, I was Catholic. I like what the Pope's saying. Then he goes on to miscommunicate what the Pope said. So I said, why would you listen to those two bumps? And I'm being myself. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Gotta have fun. She says, what do you mean? I said, what do I mean? Durr. They're overwhelmingly abortionists. They love abortion. That's what she said to me. She had a glass of wine. She said, I told her I was. I don't know if I did. I might have. Because I, I, I love that's a great card to throw out in here. You know? <laughs> Who are you? I'm a priest. I'm the second in command here. <laughs> <laughs> now, if Father Simon's around, I'm the third. <laughs> You know what? Considering Don, who works as the secretary, I might be fourth. <laughs> I'm not sure. And I'm okay with that. When, when, when my senior goes away, I tell everybody, hey, everybody, Father Sanctum to charge. If he's got it, call Don. <laughs> so I said to the lady, so here's what she said. I, I'm not saying try this at home. I'm just telling you my role. Okay? She said, here's what you Catholics do. She's going after me. Here's what you Catholics do. You're pro life. Yeah. You like the baby in the womb. Then what about when the baby comes out? So I did. Stop right there. That's a lie. No more speaking to you. No more speaking. No, I told you. No, no, that's a lie. That is so untrue. Who runs the orphanages in this country? Who takes care of the adoptions in this country? Seriously. Who feeds the poor? Who's around the world right now taking care of water and getting food and medicine? We are! I'm not going to take that from that lady. Wish it was a man. It'd be easier to give her my hard time. <laughs> I wouldn't tell me I'm a sexist. I don't want to hear that. But anyway, the point is, if you know your faith and it's the church's faith, Someone used it earlier. You can be a lot more confident. You can be a lot more anchored. You can be a lot more stable. Don't buy these cheesy arguments. They happen all the time. I brought the, 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 the pulpit on Sunday, the, the well, Chicago Tribune. Friday, they were out of their minds. Like the cover story. By Sunday, I don't know what happened. I don't know who got to them. They mellowed out a little bit. In two days. They must have talked to some good Catholic who straightened them out. <laughs> or made a phone call. You got a job to do. You can start with your faith, you know your new jobs? Straighten people out. You gotta straighten people out. And you only gonna do that with the sort of truth on your side. In a very humble and loving and charitable way. Now again, I'm the youngest son, so I got picked on, I like antagonize, just that's how I roll. 
You're one of these people. That's not going to be your style. But you still got to wield that sword of, of truth in a manner that's, that's commensurate with, 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 your, with your personality and your style. Okay. Uh, where are we going, Pastor? Okay. I think we said that. Uh, any comments? Any comments? We'll see a few more things, and I'm going to go to this thing. I'm talking so long. Okay. Any comments? Come on, someone say something. Want to say something? You follow all this? <laughs> listen, listen, I'm not going to be able to illuminate for you the light of faith in this first section. All that has been proposed here. Okay? I, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'll tell you what. It's overwhelming. And I love the first chapter. I mean, wow. It's it just it's mind-bending. What's the first chapter? To be, I believe in love. You know, people are okay. Hey, stop right there. Stop. Stop for a second. You want to give me a hard time? You want to accuse me of something? I believe in love. Love has revealed itself to me. And he wants to reveal himself to you. Look, what's so good about the secular life? What's so amazingly going on outside these walls that is so entertaining, so earth-shattering, and so humanly satisfying? Nothing. Nothing. You should, you should want your neighbors to have the faith so much because you enjoy it so much. We, what a great first chapter. I wonder how long you took home with that one. It's like angels wrote it. I'm serious. What an awesome first chapter. What's, 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 what's your problem with me? Yeah, let me help you out. You're mad at me because I believe in love. And love showed himself to me. Came down from heaven, light years away from a place far, far. And became one of us. In all things but sin, carry my sins to the cross. For me, it's it's overwhelming. It, it's, it's awesome. Anything else? You want to say? Is that anybody? So this is the greatest of conversations you'll have your entire life. This is the greatest conversation you'll have your life. Because faith gives wings to hope. Now my hope means something. I just came from a funeral earlier today. And and I, I was so grateful. She was a wonderful lady. And the kids all had faith. It's a whole different ballgame preaching to a crowd of people of faith that a crowd could, you know, get, for those of the choir, uh, I got a few, well, some sense of humor in my home for a few more. If you don't have faith, you are so turned off. You don't know me, you come there as a visitor, who is this guy? <clears throat> I know the constipation look. <laughs> this is anger look. It's like, <clears throat> You know, I want to know the next time I go to the hospital crowd, I'm going to hand out the, my, my dentist card. Here, get your teeth fixed. Because you're overweight. You're overweight, must be killed. <laughs> no, why not? But, but I just lost. Look, we've all lost someone. I can't begin to tell you what you're feeling, and I'm not going to do that. But look, it's a funeral. This is what it is. I can't help but think about John. John and Jeff, and I apologize, lady. How long? A year and a year and a couple months? Yerko once, and before John died, we, I had him laughing. He must have had a trouble with him. Uh, and his wife was sitting, and I apologize. We laughed so much, I almost killed him. <laughs> he was on some special breathing thing, and I know she, she was scared. And I'm like, John, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether it was it, or just a really good punchline. It's delivered really well. But he had a chocolate of fame. He just did. He just did. Um, Okay, I'm going to move on. Number one, I'll do all myself. Expression. <laughs> one in Sickle's major points might be summed up as believing is seen. Absolutely. And, and we're going to talk about this next week a little bit. If someone doesn't have the faith, remember, remember the laws? You don't follow the laws. Your kid is going to church. You miss mass on Sunday. And you're a bad kid. And you're a bad kid. He doesn't see anything. His head is in the sand. I, why do I mess with the daily mass scores? They can take it. No one else can take it. Look, I, I hate to reject people. The truth! You can't handle the truth! That's a great scene. <laughs> Slow moving. Great scene. Okay. So, the meaning is totally the same. Can you even think for a second what your life would be like without faith? I can't. I cannot think about my life or my life without believing in having faith. The way I can see things. I'm just telling you. And I don't know what's going to happen. You pray for me. Nothing's going on. I'm fine. Okay? But if something does happen to me, I say this today. 
I'm never going to lose my faith. I'm not challenging a devil. I'm not trying to make a big I'm not trying to. I believe so much by the gift of grace that God is real and he loves me. And he, and he appeared to me. I didn't see it. No, no. Through the church's teachings, through, through my heart, through my mind, through my experience of God. I'm not going to give that up. What would I give it up for? What's coming along? So is it cream cheese? Don't think so. Big, big pile of money? Don't think so. I just can't see doing it. Faith is a kind of, it's not a kind of, it's a real thing. Uh, what's our favorite Protestant song? What's our favorite Protestant besides our great door? What's the second most prayer? Amazing Grace! Yes. I was, was blind, was blind, but now. Everyone loves that song! At funerals, it's awesome! They played it today in the bagpipes! It was great! But we love that Protestant song. We do. Why? Because it's awesome. It's the closest metaphor we got. I can lose you. It's, it's, it's a weak metaphor. If you were blind, you could see. That's nothing compared to having no faith and having faith. Having no faith and having faith, having faith is a bigger issue. I'm not saying it's no faith. It's a terrible physical handicap. Excuse me. It's a terrible physical handicap. I wish about nobody. But can you imagine having no faith? You have faith? How about Peter at the, at the catching of the fish? Lord, get away from me. I'm, I'm a sinful man. Whoa! That's a powerful encounter with Christ. He, he, saw, he, saw, he saw God in Jesus Christ. He saw Jesus Christ to be God. And that was the first response. Depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Or how about when he wanted to wash his feet? No, no, you can't wash my feet. Peter, if I don't wash you, oh, Lord, wash my feet, my neck, my Wash all of me. I'll take a full shower. Get those water jugs in the weather. Okay. Number four, number two, true or false? False. Francis called it the single order of four hands. Four hands are Benedict's two in history. Number three, the philosopher Frederick Nietzsche was a brilliant philosopher whose work greatly advanced our faith. I'm going to say false, but the church has done this for 2,000 years. If you're an intellectual, not everybody comes to understand the faith intellectual, which is too bad. We give ourselves too many excuses. You can read, you can learn, you should be smarter, especially if you're a teacher. You know that. You teach people, you'd be smarter. Three ways to come to the faith. We talk about the three transcendentals. Goodness, beauty, and truth. For those of us who like to read and enjoy truth, I say these major philosophers have helped the faith. Because what does the church do after 5, 10, 20 years? We grind them up and spit them out. <laughs> Pooey! Tastes bad. We do. We triumph over all these guys. We boot them out of the church, we tell them they're heretics, we tell them bad philosophy, bad table about sitting at it. Waiter! You table off, get this stuff out of here. Right? Think about that. The church grinds out bad philosophers, and she incorporates the good ones. So, the answer is false. But I'm saying, you can see how that, if you were an intellectual, the church benefits from idiots. <laughs> All things work to the good for those who love God. Okay. Number four, this is single was made public on the eve of the beginning of the year of faith. False, in the middle. Five, the single acknowledges atheism and the, as the antithesis of faith. True or false? False, what's the right answer? What is the antithesis of faith? You would think it's atheism. But we're having a lot of fun here. Close. He, he, he said it, he said it in the thing. Now we'll see who read it. <laughs> okay, nobody on the at least you're here. At least you're here. At least you're here. What is the what is the antithesis of faith? Don't talk over there. These people are all from South Florida. They came all the way here to listen to me. Those poor, poor people. No. Who said it? What is it? Who said it? Idolatry. I very very good. Some read it. Idolatry. Idolatry. Is the, is the antithesis of faith. It's not atheism. And, and this is a great one for you. There's another one. Quote me on this. It's certainly not doubt. It's certainly not doubt. If you're doubting, you're thinking. Remember, it's not obstinate. Not, I'm not standing, whether it's abortion, I think I have two things in my mind. But Paul, my poor Paul, he's, he's, he's talking about me. Because I can't stop thinking about people committing abortions. Or the same sex union. I think it's absolutely the core of destroying our society. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm just about to go there again. Because if someone says, I think that, you know, these poor guys, they love each other, this and that, well, he doubts the church's teaching. 
That's different from the church is wrong. That's not a doubter. Right? That's someone who's standing in obstinate untruth and defiance. Same thing with abortion. You can say, well, I'm not sure. Well, pray about it. You know, don't, you, this doesn't work anymore. It worked in 1950. I'm not sure anymore. Shut up. Believe what I tell you. And we took it. I know I took it from my dad. And it worked. It did. I'm sorry. It worked. We had a far more authoritative society. And telling someone what the truth was, they were able to take it. That's just my experience. We might have different parents. Now, can't yell at me. Seriously. People can't take it. So when someone is in doubt, what do you do? You gently guide them. Again, not me, you. <laughs> no, we gently guide them into all truth. They are worth your patience. They are worth your time. Because once the light goes on and they can see, the rest of the stuff is peace gate. Once you follow up with God, follow the rules, sacrificing, being committed, peace gate. Sorry. It might not be easy. But we understand what's entailed in commitment and the relationship. Right? I'm going to go offend God. So, the opposite of idolatry. Article 13. I always talk about the apathy, too. Because that's my big beef on the kids today. And it's a terrible consolation to have. But it's not that they don't just believe in Jesus. They don't believe in anything. And that's sad. Yes. Idolatry is sort of the nature kind of wired Yes. Those two guesses colliding. 
Come on, guys. Where did I come from? I don't know. Well, answer it a little louder, would you please? <laughs> Global warming. You know what conservatives call global warming? Summer. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not saying it like I don't know the answer, but it's global warming. It's, it's a joke. Maybe there is global warming. I don't know. Is it man made? I don't know. Call a climatologist, preferably a conservative one. Okay. <laughs> Number nine? Eight. Eight. It's inevitable that science will eventually tell us all there is to know. False. People think that's true. And I think it's so false. I think it's so false. It's, it's, it's a position people hold. Well, one day we'll get there. Well, why not now? You can spice an atom, man. I don't know how electric works. I can't believe we still drive on the railroad tracks and trust that once that thing is up, we can go. That's a lot of trust. I'm talking about faith. You got a mother like four or five kids or eight or nine, and you drive in a big minivan, a big van, and she's like, well, the thing's up, but you must not be a train. Think about that. You just take it for a second nature. You're like, well, of course there's no train coming. How do you know there's no train coming? I would stop at the bus driver that look both ways. Um, number nine. Not everything worth knowing can be known to the scientific method. True. Not everything worth knowing. Not everything worth knowing can be known to the I don't even understand the question. But I'll start with the true right answer. Yeah. True is the answer. Give me an example. Okay, so our older son said, you know, we have a problem. Right. He's debating the meaning of everything and the meaning of the sense of everything you can So do you believe that Grandma loves you? He's, he, he's, he's uh, hesitate for a minute. He goes, yes. I said, how do you know that? He started to name her ex. And I said, well, do you believe the mom? I love you. And he said, yeah, well, how do you know that? He, he told about some of our behaviors. He said, well, that's not proof. Maybe we're faking it. He said, don't think I haven't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, that and I laughed just like you did. And he, he, got, he kind of laughed at himself and scurried out of the room. Wow, that is a radical. Hang on, hang on, question something else. That's good. If Christ were not resurrected, if, for example, remains were discovered and verified, we had any doubt whatsoever, our faith would be misplaced and pointless. Absolutely true. Yeah. Now, again, that, that is like trying to square a circle. It, it's never going to happen. I'm not worried about it happening. Uh, it's the most important thing. Okay, three more. If you have questions, please ask them. i got three more points I want to make. Um, Question. Three more. Yes, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things unseen. That's what I want you to write down. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and evidence of things unseen. Okay. Now, last three things. What does faith mean to you? Faith opens the way before us and accompanies our steps through time. Hence, if we want to understand what faith is, we need to follow the route it has taken, the path trodden by believers as witnesses first in the Old Testament. So obviously the Jews start this story. And it's I used to I used to not like this language, but it's so true. We are all on a journey of faith. The goal, as I mentioned, is to make what Jesus left us, which the church possesses, our foundation to faith. We want the church's faith, as Mary professed on the foot of the cross to be our faith, okay? And the question is, do we believe this? Do we believe that it's possible? Are we open to this? Look, as much faith as you have, when you receive communion, you should be asking for more faith. But we always say when we pray, we change God's will. We're more often than not changing our way of accepting God's will. What would it be like if you had the kind of faith, we've talked about this a few times, what would it be like to have the kind of faith in this daily Mass for Sunday Mass for us too. On Sunday, you go to Mass just on Sunday. You're at Sunday Mass. You should, I pray you do, feel, know, believe that at that moment, regardless of everything going on, Syria, abortion, all this, the whole love, hatred, betrayal, the heroic virtue, sacrifice, dishonor, valor, all the things that go on in this life, mund uh, mundane things. Just think about that. Just expand your imagination. That in this moment, in the eyes of God, through the light of faith, you are exactly 
are you supposed to be? In this time, in this moment, you trust and believe exactly what God wants me to do. I'm not maybe uh, getting a medal. I might not be solving a crime. I might not be curing cancer. I might not be writing a great tome or a thesis. But in this one moment, with all my inadequacies and all the troubles of the entire universe, me and God are one, and I'm wherever you want to be in this moment. Think about that. I want you to have that. That's a gift of faith. That's what faith tells you. You're not racing your head. You're not going backwards with resentment. You're not going forward with anxieties. Mr. and Mrs. Perfectionist, you turn that thing off. I really feel sorry for perfectionists. I got 99 problems. That ain't one. I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> we'll get it done. It won't be perfect. No such thing. Okay, so that's my first thing I'll tell you. Number two, as it comes to, so, so, going back to number one, what is the ultimate goal of faith? Obviously, obviously to, fuck, to know God, to love Him, and to serve Him in His life, and be happier than the next. It is to live, a, and there's it's, it's another word with quotations, live a Christ consciousness in each and every present moment. It is to live each and every moment conscious of God's presence right here and here. That's, that's the goal of the spiritual life through faith. To live consciously, moment to moment, in the presence of God. No matter what spirituality you might be a Franciscan, a Dominican, a Jesuit, a good St. Thomas, you know, Daily Mass or Rose Mary and Rose, whatever you're into, Benedict, Fred, you know, Francis, the ultimate goal of the presence of God in general. Point number two. The faith is before I can demonstrate the faith or do works of the faith or witness the faith, I must do what? I must receive the faith. God loves me first. I didn't choose him first. He chose me. So instead of going to the doing right way, why not go to the receiving right way? Be a receptor. Be receptive to God's loving you. Too many people have to have doubts and trust and whatever it be, self-esteem or self-worth or body image or, or mommyology where you wet your pants or I don't know what happened. I'm not trying to underestimate you. Maybe you did beat you. There's real sad stories out there. But unless you first feel loved by God and you receive that love, the rest of it's going to be very difficult. It could be wrote. Wouldn't you like to have the kind of freedom to say what's on your mind and just be free speaking? And so I always worry about what people think about you and how they're going to judge you because you're not good enough. You're going to be old. Oh. Well, you don't, you want to know about that. No, I'm kidding. That's how you come. Look at her. Terrible group judging me. She gave me a softball. I just happened to have a whole run with it. You turn on me quick. I saw someone lighting a torch. Got him. She's not even old. Some of you are old. <laughs> I do. It's Mary Jane's. She's speaking for South Let me tell you about before going further. My last point. She got arrested many years ago for standing in front of the abortion bill and blocking the passage. And she went to the slam. <laughs> They shut it down a couple years ago. Remember that? Yeah. They shut it down. That's one of the games that got it shut down. Today's your birthday. Mary Jane. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary Jane. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> So we're at having dinner, and she said she was a teacher for a while, working in a public school. And you know, kids have these crazy names. So she was saying, this one kid had the name of marijuana. What? Yeah, she put a little joke. Forget the joke. You got the joke, didn't you? Some kid's name is marijuana. Wait a minute. What's your name? Mary Jane. I go, did you get it? Some guy has something to get. Thanks, dude. <laughs> hey, I worked it in too. No, it's okay. It is getting late. It's getting late. But, but that's what we have things for. Okay. Receive.
receptivity. Can we get a present moment? Receptivity. Those are, these are big words to this guy when it comes to faith. For, my, for me to do, i got to receive. Everything I've got in this life, I don't know how you feel. I've received it. What did I do? I have not, have I already this on my mom today? You see my mom? I should be a saint by now. I'm a slugger. I'm a, I'm a lax. I am. I should be doing much better in a spiritual life. Everything I've ever done, I've received. Any degree of, of accomplishment I've ever, ever had, it was something I just weird back that I got. I've done nothing on my own. Just ask my mother. Oh, I, I dirty the house. I did all my own. <laughs> Didn't make my bed, didn't walk a dog, caused trouble and spill things. I didn't touch God, let me get any of that stuff. That's all I mean. You gotta receive. Shoot. Think about it. Think of it that we pray. You know, God, give us this day. And live the present moment. Too many troubles are brought up from the past into the present and the future. I don't know if, if tomorrow's coming. You know, are you sure tomorrow's coming? I hope it comes. Why not? And last thing, and the book is, uh, and this is written for the bookstore. You should all know the Little Way Bookstore across from Bucky's downtown, Lake. <laughs> That's a good place. And I was, I was at Bucky's today, having a little coffee. It's my office on the west side of Bristol Lake. East side of Bristol Lake, St. Thomas East. And his wife comes over. It's, the it's your birthday today. How old are you? Yeah. Rick. Happy birthday to you. Theological or dogmatic equation. 
when I say there's three persons and one God, do I know what I'm saying? Maybe you do. I, I take it on faith. There are three persons and one God. Right? Jesus was true God and true man. How do they interact? How does that work? The church has clear definitions. I know the definitions. I have to read some and look them up. To be honest with you, do I understand how he existed in a divine nature? As a divine person united to a human nature? The mysteries, the Bible said, you did. So our, our faith gives us a clinging, a positive clinging, not to our guns in our religion, but a positive adherence in a sense that the church reveals about God. And I, and I, feel, I feel certain about it, but I don't necessarily understand. How about this? You fall in love with your, with your spouse. You say, I totally love my spouse. Can you explain it? Did you see my spouse? <laughs> I totally love them, and I do not understand. <laughs> I'm right. I'm serious. My, my point is, there's, there's always going to be an elusiveness to God. Bob Barrett has a great line. If you ever think you got God, drop it. <laughs> it's not God. That's his great line, Bob Barrett. If you think you got God, it's not God. Now, I'll, I'll close with this. What is our greatest intimacy with God on this earth? It's going to be Holy Communion. It's our greatest intimacy on earth. And I just encourage you strongly, when you pray, when you read, when you do your homework, do your homework, get this book I'm talking about. Expand your mind. The more you know, the more your faith will grow. The more you talk about your faith, the more you'll, you'll correct people, positively, gently, and say, that's just not true. Well, look, look at us. Who, which, which people call themselves Christ are blowing things up? Which people identify themselves as genuine Christians are blowing themselves up? Nobody! If I hear one more person, well, what about the person? Oh, be quiet. They don't even know what they're talking about. So, let's, let's, let's close with this. As we close to the Adoration Chapel, as we try to build and grow our faith, when you receive communion, pray that God will give you a desire to pray. Pray to pray for the desire to pray to, to learn and grow your faith. So that every time you come to Holy Communion, it's not some rote ritual and a constant repetition. It's a beginning, it's a new event, it's a real encounter with the resurrected Christ in faith, in mystery, and in truth. And when you pray, when you receive communion, believe that, experience that. God, I know, do it this way. God, I know you're inside of me. I know you're one with me right now. Pour out more than I could ever possibly receive. But I'm trying! And keep trying. Okay? We're good? Okay, I'm going to go to the angle. So let's close with prayer. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I want to God, we thank you and praise you for our life, for the love you've given us, in a special way, this incredible, giftless, I'm sorry, priceless gift of our faith. May we all nurture it more deeply, live it more fully, and, and impress it upon others by our witness and word and action. May Almighty God send his most choicest gifts upon you, his most Holy Spirit, in the Father, and the Son, and the same Holy Spirit. Amen. amen.